Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Here is the gouache palette and we are going to go over how it dried and the tendencies for the different brands on how it dried. Um, let me raise this up so you can kind of see. Overall, the browns tend to crack more for some reason. Um, a lot of them do have cracks in them and lifting from the pans. And these were topped off once after the initial pour, which I will link the video above. As far as the brands go, um, I did have one mold in the tin and it was left completely open to dry. And that was the, the pan that molded was an M gram and it was the ultramarine and I replaced it with ultramarine by Holbein which had no problem whatsoever. So that's something to consider. I really wouldn't pan anything. I would use M-gram only out of, um, out of the tube. I did press these with my finger to kind of compress them in between the pores and that helped with some, but not with all. Some are, we're just going to lift no matter what. The Schmincke, um poured out a little chunky and they tended to kind of bubble in the pants, but it actually didn't stop them from working correctly. So as far as the browns, they're a little ugly, but they do Rewet these take a little bit of extra moisture to rewet the browns over in this section. And um, I did go ahead and I did this picture in watercolor, and then all the little toppings were done with the gouache palette, which was what it was intended for, and it worked out really, really well. But today we are going to paint a full picture and see if this palette holds up. So let's go ahead and try this dry gouache palette out and see if we can paint a picture. All right, we're going for the second coat on this corally color. I mixed um, this pink, this yellow, and this orange to get this color. And I'm hoping I get a more matte appearance to it. The bottom of the page is gessoed. So it's kind of feeling a little slick. I think that was a mistake. So we got on the house base coat 
and that was quite difficult um, to get that large space so I did have to add in a little liquid white with it um, so not just the dry palette a uh, tube of white actually as well so let's go ahead and start getting the window in and we're gonna use a little ultramarine this one straight I mix a little bit of the ultramarine with Haynes Gray. I'm just trying to get a little bit of depth here. Little straight panes in between on the bottom window. This palette works so much better when it's um, just small areas. I don't have to be too precise because the plants will go over it. I guess it's in its ugly stage right now. like I'm trying to make a little bit of like a drapes and so I'm just using a little bit of warm gray I'm gonna fill these in and then see if we can make them look a little bit like they have fabric to them While that's drying for a few minutes, we're gonna see if we can get some brown on the door behind these like gates. Ooh, let's pick a pretty red brown. Maybe this is more. They all re-wet really nicely. Um, just easier for smaller spaces because it's hard to get a lot at one time which was the problem I was having with the like peachy pink stucco. It came out a little streaky but I think I kind of like it for that. So let's see if we can add in maybe a bit of dark. And these browns, they do crack more than any of the other paints.
Let's go ahead and use a little of this paint gray on these lamp fixtures. Go ahead and fill those in with a little creamy yellow. Let's go ahead and get the cream around the doors. Now I'm going to do the steps and we're going to do those in some light grays. a little bit bright yellow in those lamps and then we'll start working on the greenery in front here and then do the details this is way too peach I think we need to oops I think we need to move that down a little bit that's nice there now I gotta pick out some greens. All right, let's do a little bit of this greenery. See if we can get some deeper greens in first. We'll add some lighter ones on top. While that's drying, I'm going to lighten up the cream around the door.
All right, all the main colors are down. I'm just gonna go in and detail everything up now. Well, let's go ahead and tape pull this and see what we got. I'm 
So that was fun. I haven't painted a full picture in gouache in a very long time. Um, you heard about the problems I had with the large area, and that's the reason I kind of left this the large area. I did add a little bit of texture on it to kind of conceal that the paints would have been so much better out of the tube. Um, details were fine. Um, little areas were fine. And overall, you can definitely use this to paint a whole picture or as a travel kit or something like that, a drying gouache in pans. But for larger areas, I had to add white to this and it's still, the consistency still was not quite there like a tube using it straight out of the tube. So I would say for very small, this is um, six by eight size, so it's not even that big. Um, so if you're painting lots of detail or smaller pieces or something, you could probably use a whole dry palette along with a tube of white. But um, for larger pictures, I would definitely do out of the tube. So that's my final results of my gouache palette. It works perfect for my type of topping off little pictures. And, um, and we'll see how it goes in the future. I'll keep you updated. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to hit a button below for subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.